Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by Omen's new wireless range of mice, keyboards and headsets. As we hit closer to the launch of the next-gen consoles, we're seeing more game footage and learning about the new graphical features of the games. And Insomniac Games has released more media and details of Marvel's Spider-Man and Miles Morales on the PS5, both of which feature ray-traced effects. From what I have seen here, the visuals on Showcase fall in line with what I expect from next-gen console hardware, and they both look excellent. Heck, I'm even surprised we're seeing this much support for ray tracing at launch. Yet, reading commentary online, I was surprised to see the general dismissal of how these ray traced features look, or the resolution, or the frame rate that the games run at. That dismissal puzzles me. So in today's video on Digital Foundry, I will be presenting a primer of sorts about ray tracing on next-gen consoles, about how it works in discrete steps with an example, and in doing so, hopefully explain why ray tracing looks the way it does in a game like Marvel's Spider-Man on PS5. So first things first, let's discuss exactly what the ray tracing mode in there does in Spider-Man on PS5. Ray tracing looks to be exclusive to the 30 FPS mode, which is targeting 4K, which may or may not be using a dynamic resolution like Insomniac games have done in the past. Here ray tracing is used for reflections in the game, like those you can see on the side of the car here in this screenshot where Spider-Man and the world are visible, or in the building window here in this screenshot, reflecting Spider-Man and the city off into the distance and off screen. According to the press release, ray tracing is also used for ambient occlusion. This is harder to identify though in screenshots or in videos, but in general, ambient occlusion adds shadows into scenes that emulate that appearance of areas where light bouncing around a scene has a harder time reaching. From my reading of online reactions, there's disappointment firstly with the resolution and quality of the ray traced reflections in Spider-Man, which at a cursory glance looks like quarter resolution perhaps, but they are filtered so it's difficult and hard to count. That would be 1080p reflections where the rest of the image would be 4K. Commentary online also pointed out certain qualities of these reflections, like how the leaves displayed in the reflection are sparser and missing in comparison to those leaves found on the real tree object or how certain objects in the reflections like cars or certain pedestrians may be missing, or how shadows will be missing, or how tinier material details are missing, like the fine weave on Spider-Man's suit. As I see it, all these characteristics make a lot of sense actually, and are unsurprising. And it all stems from the fact that ray tracing has multiple performance sensitive steps, and developers have limited performance budget for ray tracing in the game. So let's think of it like we were developers and we're managing our own ray traced reflections. Here we have four steps that make up ray traced reflections and a budget for it. Let's say we have 8 milliseconds for reflections for a 30 FPS game at 4K. So 24% or so of the time it takes to make one frame in 33 milliseconds, which is how long it takes to make a frame for a 30 FPS game. Let's start with the first step. Light can be coming from any direction and even from areas off screen and far away. So for ray tracing, the GPU needs to have an idea of the scene and the geometry objects around the view, as well as off screen. The first step is where the GPU makes an easily readable version of the game scene to trace against later. The more objects in here and the more dynamic those objects are, the more milliseconds this step will take. The second step is where the name ray tracing comes from as a ray is shot out into that structure made in the first step, to see if it hits anything in the game scene. Here, all of the objects in the game scene have multiple invisible boxes around them of increasing size. So a ray shot into a scene goes through these layers of boxes till it finally hits and enters one and registers a hit against geometry. So the more rays that are shot out here, the further that ray travels, or the more boxes that that ray touches, the more milliseconds this step will need. This is the part of the ray tracing pipeline that is now hardware accelerated on consoles and PC. The next step in this pipeline does something with that result from step two, where a hit was registered perhaps. Simply put, this means shading the hit or choosing the color of a pixel. So like choosing the proper color for a part of a reflection. The more hits there are made to shade, or the more complex that shading is, the more milliseconds this step will need. Step three leaves us with colors and shades, but they can be a bit ugly looking and noisy. So step four comes in and cleans that up. 
Typically, the more precise and perfectly step three is cleaned up in step four, the more milliseconds step four will need. Here we are looking at around four steps and we need a total of eight milliseconds here for our theoretical game and we're nowhere near it at the start with what we've budgeted so far. So we have to go in and tweak aspects of these reflections to reduce the cost overall, as well as make sure our reflections still look good and fit our game design. This can mean cuts in quality in some areas, but specific boosts in quality in others. One of the first optimizations we could and should do would be to reduce the resolution of the ray traced effect. This would limit the amount of ray shot out and reduce the time needed for steps two and three. So like you see in the Spider-Man screenshot here where the reflection almost looks quarter resolution of the screen. This optimization is not just something that is done for console GPUs, but applies to all GPUs as ray tracing is incredibly expensive. Take the shot here from the Ghost Runner demo, where I have only turned on ray trace reflections at 4K on an RTX 2060 Super. Now there are some differences here as Unreal Engine 4 uses a method of ray trace reflections that is a bit more expensive and more physically accurate than what we may see in Spider-Man. But there is a point to be made here. The RTX 2060 Super performs similar to an RTX 2070 and has the same amount of bandwidth for its video RAM as the PS5 does to its system memory. It also has 8GB of VRAM. This GPU most likely will end up being a great point of comparison to the GPU in the PS5. At 4K rendering resolution and native resolution reflections in this scene, where the amount of ray trace reflections on the screen is small since it's a small puddle, the GPU is just barely hitting 30 FPS at full 4K with full resolution reflections. If there was more action on screen, and not just me staring at the floor here, this would definitely be under 30 FPS. Here reducing the axis resolution of ray tracing by 50% and thereby quartering the total resolution to 1080p increases performance by around 27%, leaving a lot of headroom for the GPU to be running above 30 FPS, so more could happen on screen then. In other scenes I can see more dramatic results, like here outside in the rain as this surface is utilizing ray trace reflections and takes up nearly the entire screen. In this case, native 4K resolution reflections are at 21 FPS and not at all playable. Quartering the resolution though to 1080p increases the frame rate by 58% and brings up the FPS to 33, and thus it's good enough for a 30 FPS game target like we see on Spider-Man on the PS5. So on a GPU of similar caliber to that found in the PS5, using lower resolution ray traced reflections is necessary so that 30 FPS can be hit consistently when outputting 4K resolution. It makes a lot of sense then why a game like Spider-Man on PS5 would use lower resolution reflections to reduce the costs of ray tracing parts in that pipeline. Going back to our theoretical example, we reduced the reflection resolution and it made step two and three take less time, but we're still over budget. So let's try and reduce step one by reducing the dynamism or the amount of objects to be ray traced against. This can be seen in Spider-Man where certain dynamic objects could be missing from reflections, like here in this gameplay video for Miles Morales where tons of characters are on screen and you can occasionally see that some of these characters are missing in the reflections, like this character here. From other developers, we know that many characters on screen can be expensive for this step in the pipeline. For example, certain scenes in Metro Exodus with a lot of characters cost more than four milliseconds on an RTX 2080 Ti. That would be half of our budget in our theoretical example. So it can be quite expensive indeed. So having reduced the amount of dynamic objects that can be included in ray tracing, step one is faster and our budget is now intact at eight milliseconds. But we go back in game and we're unhappy with the way it looks actually. For example, let's pretend this scene here from Battlefield 5 is our theoretical Spider-Man like game and I'm swinging near some buildings and I keep seeing distracting pop in in the reflections, just like how I see buildings popping in and out of the reflections here in Battlefield 5. Notice how the buildings disappear from the reflections. I do not like this, so I want to turn up the distance at which rays shoot out in step two and also increase the range at which objects are included into the structure for step one. Going back to our shot from Spider-Man on PS5, we can see that objects are included in the reflections that are very far away. It would probably be very distracting if large parts of the skyline that are far away were missing in reflections or were constantly disappearing in and out of them. 
So if they're turning up the quality here for this aspect and including buildings far away from the reflection source and also increasing the distance at which rays travel, it also makes sense that they would have to turn down other aspects of quality to make up for that. Let's go back to our theoretical budget again. We've now increased the distance and made faraway objects show in reflections, which makes step one and two take more time. So we're back to being over budget again. So here we need to go back in and make some more strategic cuts. And I think to step two to bring us back to eight milliseconds. So let's come back to that screenshot again. In the reflection on the building, you can see how the leaves in the reflection are sparser and missing in comparison to how they look in the real world next to the reflection. Leaves in games are classified as transparent. The same for particle effects. Transparent objects make step two in our theoretical example take more time. We know this from our experience in Battlefield 5 actually, where particles and reflections make some scenes extremely expensive. It's also why we at Digital Foundry use this campaign map for our GPU benchmarks, as all those trees and leaves are transparencies and are rendered into the reflections and are very expensive. So coming back to Spider-Man here, we can reduce the amount of leaves on the trees and the reflections to make the time for step two to go down. We can also make it so particle effects are not included in reflections like you see here, where puffs of smoke in Miles Morales are not included in the reflection. And we go back to our budget chart and we're just about there, but we're still a tiny bit over budget. So I think one last optimization can be made in step three where we shade. Let's go back again to that screenshot. See that lack of fine grain weave detail in the reflection of Spider-Man's suit that's actually on his real suit? Here, if we simplify the material in the reflection, the less time is needed to shade the reflection. And if I look at other games out there with ray traced reflections like Leufenstein Youngblood, I will also see that they do this same trick as well. So I don't feel so bad about reducing quality here. And in the end, by doing this, we've hit our theoretical eight millisecond budget goal. We've increased the quality in some areas by having reflections for objects far away at the same time, we've decreased quality in other areas like the resolution or the dynamism of certain objects. And hopefully, by showing this theoretical example, we've also gained an understanding for the pick and choose battles that game developers have when they have to deal with a limited performance budget and an expensive technique like ray tracing. And if you felt that this gave you a greater appreciation or understanding for that battle, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us make more content like this in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about ray tracing or Spider-Man on PS5, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. Featuring its new warp wireless technology, Omen's PC peripherals allow for lag-free gaming. From the 360-degree audio of its Omen frequency headphones, the 180-hour battery life of the vector mouse, and the 2.4 GHz connection of its spacer keyboard, Omen has you covered for the ultimate wireless experience.